click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about XML applications, how XML store and support the data for the complex data types, the go for the standard data exchange formats, XML web services and also the mediation of data. XML application supports that many of the XML data features and tools that XML used to configure the data. Now the support for the storing complex data types goes for that when we use a web page, we see there are several types of settings. There are language settings, display settings, functional settings and all. So the update, upgrade, automatically upgrade, there are many numerous settings on a web service or a web browser that we are using. Now every settings that we are making on a web browser is for our use only and for this internet session only. So how these data are handled? They are handled by this XML format structuring. Now the XML structure supports for the complex data types. This means all the XML applications support the complex data types that they can store the color, the language, the functional settings, the upgradational settings and all the data are stored in a complex structure. Now when XML applications support for these structures, they are mentioned in this XML type data and they can be fetched with an XML declarative queries like this XPath and XQuery. Suppose that the language and the color of a background as well as the font of a particular XML data needed to be fetched. So we can store that as a part of a relation, all the attributes as a simple attribute and the collection of it as a sub-element to the element XML. Now we can use the XML element, XML attribute complex structures to store this data and then we can use this as an application because the application program interface or the API is the main one to deal with the user and the web. So the web interface is nothing but an API that it provides a user to deal with the XML data. The user when using the web browser doesn't know that how to handle those data. So there is an application who converts the data that the user is fetching or feeding to the web service that they store it into the XML complex type structure. Now moving to the next standard data exchange formats. Now the standard data exchange format supports that some specific type of applications. Say for when and in a when an airline service systems, then they will follow a simple data exchange format. But when we are going in a financial side, they will go for a more complex data exchange format. So for individual enterprises, they are supported by XML different type of data exchange formats. What do you mean by data exchange formats? The data exchange format of DEF supports that the format are mapping them to the relational term and to the mapping to the XML term. Now when this DEF is supported, we will discuss some of this. First one is any chemical application. We know that the chemistry industry or the chemistry industry is growing far beyond our knowledge because the chemists are mainly involved with the medicine purposes or any chemical making purposes that needs a lots of information like the chemicals, the boiling temperature, the particular nature of that chemical. So we need to store that along with the chemist feature. So ChemML is a support of this XML data exchange format that is going for this chemistry department and the chemist uses this ChemML very popularly because in ChemML there are some predefined format for storing the chemical oriented data. Now if we go for in shipping information, like the shipping is more about the product, the sales, the services, the quantity, the price and all. So the shipping services is going with the ship ML function on an XML data format that it supports. Now going to the bigger industry like an online shopping. When we go for an online shopping, we know there is a predefined format for shop to any one of the online services. It can be the garments, it can be any products, it can be any service. When we are purchasing or selling over online, there is a predefined format. 
Say for example, we can first choose the product among many options, then we can add it to the cart. After that, we can go for the final payment, choose between the credit card, debit card, and this cash on delivery options and all. Now, when we can choose in this format, we use the RosterNet XML data support format to go for this online shopping support. Now, which uses the normalized data forms in storing this type of applications in an XML data support, it should create the proper naming and proper storing of attributes or sub-elements according to their need. So if they're of simpler type, we can add it to an attribute. If that is in a complex type, we can add it to a sub-element to an element. So the tree-like structure of an every XML application helps us to store the data very easily, and we can fetch the data very smoothly and reliably also. So it just supports that the duplication of any XML attribute as well as XML element is restricted within this type of application. Now let us move to our next section that is web services. Now what is web services? Before knowing of web services, we should know that different types of complex data types that XML supports. XML supports open office XML or OOXML or open document format or ODF. Now this type of data formats are obviously featured with many of the tools that XML provides to help us with a better designing and web enhancement. Now some of our basic model structure or basic model procedure supports this type of XML complex format. Now SOAP is one type of this format. What is in SOAP? SOAP is in simple application object model. Now, when we talk about SOAP, we are actually referring to every element, consider it as an object, and then provide the object-oriented features of that element. That means we can inherit from an element like the sub-element. We can add an attribute to the element, just like the behavior. We can even go for adding a method to an element, just like an object can have within this class. Now the SOAP also supports that it goes for a WSDL, that means the one for definition language. So with the standard definition language or WSDL, it supports that the language used for defining the SOAP. So sometimes there are some predefined function that we need to define for the XML tool supporting the services. Now all the services that XML tool supports, like for an airline reservation system, booking sets for the ticket reservation, then go for check for the window sets, go for the offers that are provided to customers, then update the sets, and then go for the projection on the flight, all these things are needed as a collection. So we cannot go for a single service to this. So the collection of this type of functions to a particular data exchange format is known as a web service that we provide to. That means when an enterprise is looking for something, that they are looking for a web service, not an individual function to the service. So the web service means not a function, but a collection of functions. Now this web service provides UDDI, that is universal disparity, disintegrity, in integrity. Now when this UDDI format support the data exchange and this disintegrity among the integrity, that means they are supporting different types of features integrated within a single environment. Now the web services supported many way the applications they are using is in the airline base, is in the online shopping, is in the food decoration system, and every other system that is going for an online popularity nowadays. Now we will talk about data mediation. What is data mediation? Sometimes we see some web services or a web browser that provides us with an intact comparison of different types of web services. Say for you heard about this Trivago. What does not Trivago do? It helps us to find hotels with different accommodation sites. Like it's go with the Go Ibibo, Make My Trip, compare their hotel rates and give us a comparison. So the web service that provides us the mediation of data. That means it mediate among the data. So it go for same like structures of every website and give us a comparison of the website. 
Now look for some financial sites like the mediation is hoping that the information is maintained by the mediation is the credit card information, debit card information, account information, interest rate information of every bank. Now it is not a straightforward task because the different types of banks can provide different types of data exchange formats. So in that the mediation or this wrapper transformer actually helps to transform the data to the relational form into the XML form. Now the wrapper application wraps up the data from the HTML to the XML and this XML data can be used for each of this application combined into a single application known as the mediation application. So suppose that one bank uses the account number as an attribute to the account, another uses the account ID for an account information. So it can use by the mediation either the different name or the same name that is associated to it. So it is the type of the mediation and other than the wrapper there are some inbuilt support for XML data conversion from the relational or the HTML form. Now this type of data mediation is absolutely important in nowadays while we are dealing with many types of websites provide many types of web services to the single function. So we can choose among them wisely by this mediation of data that is supported by the XML and also supported by the SQL 1999 or 2003 features. So that is all for the XML applications in today's features. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.